Welcome to Calvary. We're glad that you could join us for worship today. It's a pleasure to have you. If you go online and search the news, or if you go on Facebook or Twitter, you'll quickly realize people just can't get along. It seems like they're constantly fighting against each other. It almost seems like they would rather be on different planets so they never talk to one another. But could this happen to us as we share the message of Jesus? Do you find yourself saying, Lord, why them? Well, the Lord tells us why we share this message. Because he loves them. Because he loves you. Because he loves me. Thank you for worshiping with us. We hope you join us again. Welcome to Calvary. We're glad that you could join us for worship today. If you'd like to follow along with our worship folder, you can find it on our website. The worship will also be posted to your screen for you today. We'll begin with our opening hymn, and we ask God to bless our worship today. Psalm 133 and 134. 
you are invited to speak along the refrain, and the glory be to the Father. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who minister in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. May the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. The first lesson for today is Isaiah chapter 56 with selected verses. The Lord has always wanted his people to be with him. He's wanted to save them. Even in the Old Testament, in Isaiah, we hear this. This is what the Lord says. Protect justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is coming very soon. My righteousness is ready to be revealed. Then the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him and to love the name of the Lord and to become his servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it, those who take hold of my covenant, I will bring them to my holy mountain, and I will make them glad in my house of prayer. Their whole burnt offering and their sacrifices will be acceptable uh, upon my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all the peoples. This is a declaration of God the Lord, who gathers Israel's dispersed ones. I will still gather others to it, besides the ones already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is Romans chapter 11 with selected verses. Yes, the Lord came for the Jews. But he also came for the Gentiles. And he came for you and me. I am speaking to you Gentiles, for as long as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I am going to speak highly of my ministry. Perhaps I may make my own people jealous and so save some of them. For if their rejection meant the reconciliation of the world, what does their acceptance mean other than the dead coming to life? In regard to the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But in regard to election, they are especially dear for the sake of the patriarchs, because God's gracious gifts and call are not regretted. For just as you were once disobedient to God, but now have been shown mercy due to their disobedience, so also now they have become disobedient. So that they, by the mercy shown to you, they may be shown mercy too. For God imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may show mercy to all. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel for the day is Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. The Lord came for all people, even the lowly. Uh, the people who the world thinks are rotten apples or are a burden on society. The Lord came for them too. And the Lord comes for us as well as sinners. Jesus left that place and withdrew into the region of Tyre and Sidon. There a Canaanite woman from that territory came and kept crying out, Have mercy on me, Lord. Son of David, a demon is severely tormenting my daughter. But he did not answer her a word. His disciples came and pleaded, Send her away, because she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to help the sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt in front of him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered her, It is good, not good 
to take the children's bread and throw it to the dog. Yes, Lord, she said. Yet the dogs also eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, your faith is great. It will be done for you, just as you desire. And her daughter was healed that very hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We join in confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text for today is Joshua chapter 2, verses 8 to 21. We read a portion of that now. But before the men lay down, Rahab came up to them on the roof. She said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land. Because of you, terror has fallen upon us, and all the inhabitants of the land are melting in fear before you. Indeed, we have heard that the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea in front of you when you came out of Egypt. And we heard of what you did to the Amorite kings east of the Jordan, to Zehon and to Og. We heard that you devoted them to destruction. We heard, and our hearts melted, and no one's courage could hold up any more against you. Because the Lord, your God, is God in the heavens above and on the earth below. Amen. Recess. Maybe a kid's favorite class. It might even rank above lunch. If we realize or not, recess is good for uh, a kid's development and also to get out some of that energy so they're not always sitting all the time. Maybe if you're still going to school, maybe you're looking forward to having some recess time with your friends again. For me, I enjoyed recess. It probably was my favorite class. Uh, I enjoyed playing on the playground. I enjoyed playing on the monkey bars, even though my feet were touching the ground in third grade. I, I enjoyed playing on the field and, and playing soccer or kickball or, or playing basketball or whatever sport. Do you remember play, playing during recess? Do you remember how sports would go? Maybe you remember it from just last year, or maybe you remember it from years ago. Often, there are two captains that are selected, and everybody else lines up in a row, waiting to be chosen. The, the, the captains decide who's going to go first, maybe with rock, paper, scissors, and the captain that won decides the first person. Often, he would choose the biggest and fastest person. And everybody knew he was going to choose that person. And then the second captain would choose the second fastest and strongest individual. And from there it kind of depended. Maybe it was a, a, a friend, maybe the most popular people, and one after one people were selected until one was left. No one really wanted to be that last person. And sometimes kids can be a little mean. Sometimes they can show their frustration by slamming down their hands. Or maybe you can see the frustration on their face. Or maybe people would even say, Why them? Why does that person have to be on our team? Why does Billy have to be on our team? He, he's new. He can't throw. He can't catch. He can't run. We don't want him. If this is a kid problem, it's also an adult problem. Maybe with neighbors, or, or friends, or co-workers, or fellow college students. But, can this happen to people thinking in the church? Can, would someone say, we don't want them on our church team? 
Lord, why them? Or would we? Today we enter a city called Jericho. We, we go through the door or the gate and enter the city and walk along the wall. And we come across a home that was connected to the wall in some way. And there, that home is owned by a woman, Rahab. You can probably picture people knew about Rahab, but not for the reasons you would think. If people saw her walking down the road, they'd probably look at her in disgust. They'd probably talk behind her back. Maybe if someone was talking to her, to her everyone else would think something's up. Why can we think this? Well, it's because of her profession. Rahab was a prostitute. And as we walk into her home, we see spies there. We see men. And they were looking at the surrounding area. At first you might think that they were there to spend the night or get some services, but they weren't. They were trying to figure out the, the landscape of Jericho to gather any information that they could and, and bring it to their leader, Joshua. This wasn't the first time Israel had spied on the land of Canaan. They had done it once before. There was 12 individuals who, who went out, and Joshua was one of them, and searched the land. But when they came back, there were 10 spies who didn't think they could do it. They, they didn't trust the Lord. They, they said they should back off and not even try. But Joshua and another spy said, yeah, we can do it with the Lord's help. And for the others' unbelief, the Lord punished the people and had them wander around for around 38 years, and until that older generation died. Joshua and that other spy were the only ones who survived, and the younger generation was promised the new land. And so Joshua sent in these spies to gather that information. But soon we see them on the rooftop of Rahab's house. Why are they there? It's because they heard a knock at the door. But who's at the door? The king had, had found out that these spies had gotten into his city and gotten word that they were possibly at Rahab's house. So he sent messengers to maybe interrogate Rahab a little bit. But what did she say to them? She said, yes, the men did come to me, but I did not know where they were from. When the gate was about to be shut at dark, the men left. I do not know where the men went. Go after them quickly, so you can overtake them. She sent the men kind of on a wild goose chase, kind of looking around everywhere for them, because she wanted to protect them. Are you surprised at what Rahab is doing? Are you surprised that she's protecting these men? What if the king found out? What if these messengers found out? She could be imprisoned or possibly worse, killed? Maybe she'd be considered a traitor by betraying her home city? Why would she do this? Well, we might get a little insight into the reason why as we hear her talk. I know that the Lord has given you the land because of you, terror has fallen upon us, and all the inhabitants of the land are melting in fear before you. Indeed, we have heard that the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea in front of you when you came out of Egypt, and we heard what you did to the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan, to Shahon and to Og. We heard that you devoted them to destruction. We heard, and our hearts melted, and no one's courage could hold up any more against you. Because the Lord your God is God in the heavens above and on earth below. Do you expect to hear something like this from a foreigner? From a prostitute? Someone who says, this is the Lord, the one and only God? It's almost like she's saying, this is the God who promised to Abraham that a Savior would come? What? How, how did... You, she find out about this. Was it from the men? Was it from someone else? We really don't know. 
but she heard about the Lord, the true God. And she even kind of confesses it. She uses the Lord's name. And she says, the God of heavens and earth. Then she asks the men, So now please swear to me by the Lord that since I have shown kindness to you, you in turn will show kindness to my father's house. Give me a trustworthy sign that you will preserve the lives of my father and mother and my brothers and sisters and everyone who belongs to them and that you will spare our lives. Rahab wasn't simply trying to protect her life and see, oh, here's my advantage uh, to maybe survive. No. It was much more than that. Rahab believed. She had faith. And even we here in the book of Hebrews, the writer speaks about it. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, and was not killed with those who were disobedient. When we look at Rahab, it might be tempting to kind of say, why? Why her? She was a pagan. She was a prostitute. She was from someone from a foreign city. Why would the Lord run to her? She was kind of the low of low. Kind of the, the bad apple of society. Why would the Lord want her? Or maybe we think about the account of Jesus and, and the Samaritan woman at the well. When, when Jesus reached out to her. And we might say, Lord, why did you do that? Why did you want that Samaritan woman? She had several husbands, and the one she was living with wasn't her own. Or, or maybe we think about the Canaanite woman, who pleaded to Jesus to spare her, her daughter from demon possession. Lord, why her? But Jesus says, Go and make disciples of all nations. Do you embrace that? Or do you say, Lord, why them? When you have the opportunity to share your faith with a woman who has had children out of wedlock, do you say, Lord, why her? Or maybe you are able to talk to somebody who has a rap sheet and a, and a criminal record, and you say, Lord, why him? Or maybe you get the opportunity to speak, G speak about Jesus to a, a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent, and you say, Lord, why them? Or maybe you have an opportunity to share the message of salvation with somebody who is a different color than you. Or maybe speaks a different language than you. Do you say, Lord, why them? Who are we to say, Lord, why them? Shouldn't it be, Lord, why me? There's so many times in our lives where we think, the Lord is supposed to choose me. I I'm great. I bring a lot to the table. I have a lot of gifts. Uh, I'm a great asset to his team. He, he needs to choose me. Really? Maybe you haven't worked at, as a prostitute. Or maybe you have bought or even gotten for free inappropriate videos and pictures online. Maybe you don't have a rap sheet or a criminal record but you've coveted and lusted over other things and other people. Maybe you think you have a, a, a squeaky clean record. Nothing's wrong. But the Bible tells us otherwise. It says, all our righteous acts are like filthy rains. We are not the best. We aren't squeaky clean. We're rotten through the core by nature, our, our sinful nature. And we should be asking, Lord, why us? 
Well, we don't deserve to be on your team. We don't deserve your mercy and grace. Rand asked for protection so that the Lord would protect her and her family when he brought his power upon the city of Jericho. The men did promise her that. And they said she just had to have her family be in her home, not to leave, not to tell anyone, and put a red cord in the window. And she did that. And she trusted and believed that the Lord would protect her. And the Lord did save her. Not just physically, but also spiritually. Did you know Rahab was part of the line of the Savior? Yes, this foreigner, this prostitute. The same line of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and David. In the genealogy of Matthew, chapter 1, of the line of the Savior, we hear Rahab's name. Solomon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed whose mother was Ruth, Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of King David. By God's grace, Rahab was chosen into God's family. By God's grace, this lonely person was shown mercy and forgiveness. By God's grace, the Lord Use this prostitute in the line of the Savior. Lord, why her? Because he loved her. He wanted to show mercy to her. And so we say, Lord, why you? Why me? Because he loved us too. He loved you. He loved me. Simply by the Lord's grace, he, he brought us into his family. Simply by the Lord's grace and mercy, he, he loves sinners like you and me. People who are rotten to the core. Who are the woe of woe. Who are rough on society. Who are rotten animals. The Lord died for people like us, to, to forgive all our sins, the sins of prostitution, the, the sins of coveting, the sins of lying, the, the, the sins of, of adultery, the sins of not listening to our parents and those in authority. The Lord shows mercy to people like us, men and women, Republican, Democrat, Independent, even young and old. The Lord loves us and He cares about us. And He didn't choose us because of who we are. He, he just brought us into His family. That's how much He loves us. And, and He wants us to go out into the world and share this good news to all people. This past week has been a, a huge week for our church here at Calvary. Why? We got a new logo for our church, new icons for our, our ministry plan. We got a new camera system that we got all set up this week. And we're hoping to run soon. Why do we put in the time, the, the effort, and the gifts for those projects. The reason is because we hope to share that gospel message with all people. Maybe friends, yes, and family members. And even those that we might not even see eye to eye all the time with. Or people who are different than us, that might look different than you and me. We want them in our church. We want them to hear about Jesus and the message that He has given to us. We don't want anybody left out. 
You don't want to be saying, Lord, why them? Well, you want to be saying to them, the Lord wants you. The Lord cares about you. Just as much as he cares about me. So, as Christians, as members of Calvary here in April, let us continue to share that message. The message of Jesus. So that more people can come to faith through baptism, like my son Levi was this past week, baptized into God's family through the Word or through the Lord's Supper. We know the Lord is going to work. And we want to share this message with the world. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you, you command us to go out into the world and, and share the good news of the Savior who came into this world to die for sinners like us. But sometimes our sinful nature gets the best of us in that mission. And we say, Lord, why them? Why do we need to tell them about Jesus? Lord, forgive us for these times. Please help us to have hearts for all people. People who are different than us. People of different color. People who speak different languages. Please help us to share your love to these people and all people. We appreciate that you shared this love to us. And we look forward to being brought into your kingdom where all nations of believers will gather. All believers who, who trust in their Savior. Amen. And we join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and keep us. Amen. We now conclude with the closing hymn.
thank you for worshiping with us today. It was a pleasure to have you. This week, we've had a lot of exciting things happen here at Calvary. One of those things is we finally have our new camera system installed. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful tool this will be for our members and for our community to share the message of Jesus as we are encouraged to do by our Lord. We are now looking for some people to help us out with running this video system. Since I'll be leading worship, it's hard for me to be in the balcony and up in front and running the system. I need help. And that's where you come in, our members of Kelvin. If you have some interest in running the system, please contact me. It's really not too difficult. You kind of hit one for one preset, two, three, and the camera just moves on its own. And you just advance the slide by pressing a button. It should be pretty straightforward and we're willing to help teach those who are interested. There's another exciting announcement we have. We now have a church logo and icons to go with our ministry plan. <laughs> the Lord is truly blessing us. Even during a time like this, it seems like one after another, we're still moving forward with God's help. The reason why we have this new logo is so that people realize who we are. They have a picture to identify us with. And it has a cross right in the middle, so they know who we believe in. We hope this logo and these icons will help encourage people to come check us out. Maybe it's on our website. Maybe it's on YouTube. Maybe it's on Facebook. Whatever way it is, maybe it's even through coming through our front doors. But whatever way it is, we're glad to reach out to these people because the Lord loves them too. We hope the, this logo and our icons help us in our ministry and sharing the message of Jesus. Thank you for all the support, all the hard work you've put in. Thank you for your time and your gifts. They're greatly appreciated. We couldn't do it without you. Let us continue to stay as a family, to keep on moving forward together. We don't want to leave anybody behind. So, God's blessings on the rest of the week, and I hope to see you soon.